Welcome everyone to the Credible Nerds Podcast. My name is Justin and we are here again to talk the fourth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I have my fellow adventurers with me, my fellow archaeologists. We got Blake here. What's up everybody? And we got Nathan. Hey, what's up? And we're here to talk about, kind of break it down and see what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, how it compares to the previous three films, and um, just kind of the whole concept of the crystal skull and the aliens. But um, just some background on the film. It was released May 22nd, 2008. So this last month was the 15th year anniversary of the, of the movie, of its release. And it made over $790 million worldwide. Uh, it's the second highest box office, domestic box office of, of 2008, just behind The Dark Knight. And they got they made over a billion dollars worldwide. I'm in the wrong business. Oh, sorry. That's, that's the worldwide gross. And then uh, Crystal Skull. And then Kung Fu Panda came in third mm. with six, eight, $641 million. I like that. Kung Fu Panda. I did too. Yeah, I like All that. five of them. <laughs> and then uh, domestically, it was Dark Knight, then Iron Man, and then Indiana Jones 4. Oh, I, Iron Man came out the same year? Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's, Dark Knight. That's a good year. Yeah. Good year for movies. Yeah. That surprises me that Iron Man didn't do better worldwide. Yeah, it was like, it was still in the top 10, but it was like six or seven, kind of towards the bottom there. Hmm. But uh, yeah, did well in the States. Um, I think it was the highest box office in the series, uh, most likely due to being released in more theaters. It was released in 4,000 theaters, while Raiders, for example, was only released in 1,000. Oh, wow. And then obviously ticket prices are more expensive. Yeah. So so these figures don't take into that. Mm -mm. I tried to, I did find something on Reddit for adjustment for inflation. So I don't know how accurate it is, but there was a ton of just numbers all over the place for that, that stat. Uh, so adjusted for inflation, Raiders made the most, 1981, 1.28 billion in today's money. Uh, Temple of Doom, 84, 958 million, which was the lowest of the, the series. The Last Crusade, 1989, uh, 1.14 billion. Crystal Skull, 2008, 1.1 billion. So basically these two, like Last Crusade, Crystal Skull, are pretty much the same amount of money earned with... Uh, Raiders being a little bit higher. So they're all pretty close. But Raiders did that in a thousand theaters. And yeah. Yeah. Crystal Skull did that in 4,000. 4,000. But back then, at least initially, a movie would come out and I would yeah. leave the theaters for like six months, right? Yeah. Now it's like it makes all its money in like a month and then. Yeah. I did look at some of the box office mojo numbers and it was showing. Like by month, it came out in May, and it was in theaters till like March of the following year. Wow! So wow. that's crazy. I guess it kind of balances out. It was the worst going to movies back then. There were you know a fourth as many theaters. Yeah, you had to buy your ticket, wait in line. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, you had to go there in the theater first thing in the morning, yeah. buy your ticket for the night show, then show up two hours early and get in line. Yeah. And run, your seat. and run yeah. to a seat and hope you didn't get <laughs> stuck in the front. I remember we went to uh, Karate Kid, yeah, and it was kind of sold out. And my mom and my dad and my little sister got seats, and I had to sit on the stairs next to <laughs> But Or sit That's in the fun. front row. And they're like, I just sit in the yeah. front You spent the <laughs> front corner. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so the story and script or script began to be developed in 93, just a couple years after, um, Last Crusade. Yeah. But they really struggled to get this off the ground. Mm -hmm. I do remember they were always talking about doing a fourth one, but it seemed like they couldn't get the stars aligned. I was, you probably already ha understand it or know, but it seems like Harrison Ford was always like, I can't get a story together. Yeah. Is that basically yeah. it? Yeah, Lucas wanted to do the Saucerman from Mars idea. Yeah, uh, Spielberg was like, "I'm done making these goofy movies. I want to focus on more serious stuff." Like, right. You know the the ones that he did. At least that. something different. Because yeah. I've done and I've done ET. I've done 
first close encounters of the <laughs> third, first kind. Well, wasn't that like Schindler's List? Uh, or like Color Purple. Color Purple. Like he got into all those uh, Oscar bait movies. What's the one about the Olympics hostage thing? Oh, Munich. 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 So he's doing those type of movies at that time. Mm. And after a while, I guess I read somewhere that his kids kept bugging him. Hey, we <clears> need <throat> to get the next Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I'll do it. So, um, but it really didn't get going until 2005. Ooh. And then the movie came out in 2008. So the synopsis is Indiana Jones and the Ki- Kingdom of the Crystal School takes place 19 years after their previous film. Set in 1957, it pits Indiana Jones against Soviet KGB agents led by Dr. Irina Spalko, searching for a telepathic crystal skull located in Peru. Jones is aided by his former lover, Marion Ravenwood, and their son, Mutt Williams. Mutt. Mutt, a.k.a. Henry Jones III. Was that a play on the fact that he was named after the dog, Indiana, so they named, they called him Mutt? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would guess so. But that wasn't his real name. It's that's Hen- name. Yeah, that was his nickname. That, that was the name embroidered on his leather jacket. Yeah, yeah embroidered. <laughs> he chose for himself, is what he said. So just to recap the timeline, Temple of Doom, it was December <clears throat> 1935. Raiders, uh, May through August 1936, Last Crusade. <clears throat> Had that opening flashback to 1912, and then the Current storyline storyline was January thirty eight, and yeah, and then Crystal Skull takes place twelve years later, nineteen fifty seven. So that twelve year gap. Um. So yeah, the the opening sequence was different this time. In the previous movies, we get this. We're in the middle of an adventure. He's trying to get something. This artifact. And then the previous two, he didn't get it. The last one, he did get it. But this one's different. It's just this is the start of the movie, and it just keeps going from there. Yeah. What do you guys think about this change? Not necessarily the, the topic or the content of this opening sequence. We'll get to that in a minute. But just the end of the format. How did you guys? Did it throw you off? Did you like it? Whatever. What would you think? Nathan? Um, I mean, I don't. I don't care if people change things up necessarily or try new things. So I, I wasn't like, oh, man, where's my <laughs> opening scene that's the beginning or the ending of a previous – that didn't, that I wasn't disappointed. I didn't particularly like the opening scene, but not because it was different. I just didn't think it was part of – the very beginning of the opening scene I didn't like, but that's a separate topic. I, I didn't miss – I did miss – it but it it didn't bother me that they didn't have it Mm. okay yeah like uh the same i mean i do like the the formula of the first three i like being right in the middle of something and 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 everything but you know it changing it up didn't bother me um yeah it's fine yeah i do like it i mean the mission impossible movies all kind of start off with they're at they're at the end of some end of a and a you know, a, a mission, and then mm-hmm. it kicks off into a whole new mission. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really do like movies that do have that, that just kind of plug, plop you right down in the middle of the action right at mm-hmm. the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of like in agreement with you guys. I was going to say I didn't like it, but then you mentioned you miss it, and that's kind of how I'm feeling. I'm like, yeah, where is that? That's yeah. kind of cool. And so uh, it wasn't bad or anything, but uh, just different. And so the, the beginning is – um, the Russians infiltrate Area 51. They're look, <laughs> looking for something. They Red pull Dawn. up. <laughs> Red Dawn. <laughs> they shoot down the, or they shoot all the guards, the military there, and get in, and they stop them. Out comes Mac and George McHale, a new character, and Indiana Jones. They were locked up in the trunk. Yep. We kind of get this cool moment in the beginning where we get this silhouette of India, Indy picking up his hat and putting a hat on. I thought that was kind of mm-hmm. a neat thing. They did a lot of that, like kind of that silhouette shadow stuff throughout. They did it a couple more times throughout the yeah. film, which I liked. But George McHale, Mac, uh, they allude that they've gone on some adventures before and they're old friends. She's like, oh, who's this new guy we've never heard of, but yet yeah. they're old friends. Um, and then they get in, they find, they're looking for this 
item in a box that's super magnetic. It's revealed that it's an alien from the Roswell crash. And that kind of sets up the story from there. Uh, then we got this warehouse chase scene. It was pretty cool with India dodging him, kind of uh, doing things as he, making things up as he goes along and like, like he does, and he's able to escape escape the Russians. Um, what do you guys think of this warehouse, the alien? We see the Ark of the Covenant a little bit so there. How did that sit with you? Well, as I just had mentioned, um, I didn't like... I didn't like the sequence, the very opening sequence with the car race thing. Mm. Uh, I that I didn't, and and the CGI prairie dog, and I, I, it just looked kind of cartoonish to me. And um, I wish that they had just skipped that whole part and just started with that scene where they pull up to the gate, and you know, and and that's where it begins. Mm. Yeah. I, I would have liked that better, I think, if they had just skipped the whole... I, I mean, I, I didn't even understand the the car racing. The the driver, the Russian driver, he shifts. He's It's got a shifter on the column. He puts it... It's not a, it's not a manual. He, sh- he like, what does he do? What is shifts he shifting? Shifts it into overdrive, He man. shifts it in overdrive, and he pushes in a clutch. It shows the scene pushing a clutch, but it's an automatic, it looks like. Uh, I think some of them used to have it on, on yeah. the column. Yeah, I looked, I looked to see if, like, if... Three on the tree. You're right. Yeah. It's three on the tree. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's, but I, I'm not familiar enough with it to, to... To, to fully understand it but it that was the first thing i was like that that doesn't make sense he changes gears on the mm. on the column and and then pushes in a clutch <laughs> after he changes the gear i can drive a manual so i don't i don't get that maybe that's something that's normal but that that from that from that very beginning that little that little continuity thing whether i was right or wrong threw me off and already put me kind of like in a like what the heck is going on here? For the rest of the movie, for okay. the pretty much for the rest of them, from that point on, everything I saw, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Whether it made sense or not, I kind of like, mm. I was like. So was a, well, that's interesting because I they did that to set the tone. Yeah. This is the 1950s. They did a lot of racing and crazy stuff like that in the 50s. Lucas directed American Graffiti set yeah. in the 50s. So that they were setting the tone, but for you, that completely backfired. Well, just the the whole shifting on the column and then pushing in the clutch and then the CGI prairie dog. I would just, it just like that. What, what's going on here? And I, and I couldn't not think about it. I, it's well, like an hour in. You're yeah. Like, Those stupid prairie dogs. I, <laughs> I'm like, I could not think about it. And then finally, when it gets to the scene where they pull up to area 51, I was like, okay, I, I, I moved on and I loved the silhouette scene. I loved the reveal. I yeah. thought that was cool. I really liked that they opened up the trunk and and they pull Indy Allen Jones out and they see they you see the guy throw the hat and he mm. gets out and picks it up and the silhouette that to me was reminiscent of Raiders because yeah. you don't see Harrison you don't yeah. see Indiana Jones until like you know right in the very beginning you kind of see this darkened silhouette and then you don't see his face until he turns around and pulls his whip out and gets the gun so i was i thought that was cool but then like the mac guy i'm like who's this guy who's this guy and we know we don't trust him yeah (laughs) like they don't even need to yeah yeah no and well and that is i mean all of these movies kind of you know use that shadow mechanic and and so in the beginning, I was like, this doesn't feel, the tone doesn't feel, feel quite right. But then when that happened, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm back in my seat. This is yeah. Indiana Jones. We're back on track here. Okay. But yeah, that's, I, I like your idea of just starting it from when they pull up to the base. Yeah. That's, I do like that. And that kind of, as I was watching it this time, there were parts that were like that where it's like, oh, that's a cool scene. How does it relate to the store? Like it's like an add-on yeah. that you could cut it and it's fine, right? Yeah. You know. Well, and it, it's weird, you know. They they have that racing scene and and that driver, that military driver, is like all into it and like yeah. like a high school kid. And then they turn right and kill a bunch of people. And <laughs> yeah. like, 
Yeah. Yeah. It seems out of character. It, it, no, it, out of character. That level, the tone was a little yeah. weird. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to have this fun, uh, you know, it's this homage to American graffiti, you know, the hot rod, you know, and then you're like, you know, and then they murder, <laughs> you know, which, I mean, it's. An, I just kind of wish they had just skipped that whole part. Yeah. I appreciate the idea, but really it was not a bad yeah. It was a, you should have cut that out. along with that. Yeah, yeah you should have sure. cut that out. Okay. Uh, sh- sh- um, let's see, we got we got there. You said you didn't trust Mac from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, he just something about him, you know. Like, and, and then you know, this the one thing I had a well, one of the things with this movie is it felt really telegraphed. You know, you even mentioned like uh, how Spielberg's kids were asking, "When do we get another Indiana Jones?" Mm-hmm. I, it felt really telegraphed and things like that. And so even Mac. It was kind of like, I was like, I don't trust him. And then, you know, two minutes later, anytime you're like, all right, the two of us have guns and my buddy's right behind me with a gun. (laughs) We were in control. You know, it's, it's just. Yeah. The guy's a double agent. (laughs) Yeah. It was pretty, yeah. Pretty telegraphed. Well, I didn't pick it up till then, but so that's cool that you did. Um, So we are introduced to the main villain, Dr. Irina Spalko. She's close with Stalin. She's looking for something, some information, and they find kind of what they're looking for with the alien, but the alien doesn't have a crystal skull. So it's not the right one. Um, and then they have the warehouse chase. What would you guys think of the reveal of well, that? Well, I, I thought the alien did have a crystal skull because later on in the movie, they she peels back his skin and you see the crystal skull. Oh. So why oh, don't... they do say it's like a cousin maybe. Yeah, yeah. but... But then I was like, why did they go get it? Why, if because they end Indiana Jones and we're getting ahead of ourselves, he he finds another crystal skull mm-hmm. by the Spaniard explorer mm-hmm. and Locke had hit put it back. So I never really understood why they had to go get that one. They never, I mean, they don't have to explain it, but I never was like, mm-hmm. why did they go? to area 51 and get this one unless they didn't know about yeah. this other one i, I never maybe really just this yeah because i don't remember how they ended up how did they end up knowing where to look for the other crystal skull i can't remember they just well, followed uh, oxley yeah. found it yeah oh he, that's right he they went put to it back oxley they got oxley and he couldn't tell them so they're like well let's go get this other one in area 51 and see if that works okay and it didn't this is my the way i see it that makes sense now that someone's explained it. <laughs> yeah, it should have been more obvious for sure. Yeah, I didn't get that. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why they were trying to get that one. Because they got it. So then why didn't they? Well, did but then uh, what happened to it at the end? Yeah, no, they had it. They have right. it. Because they, eventually. They got it later, yeah. Yeah, eventually. They had it at the camp. They had it at the camp, still in the coffin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyways. Yeah, but that whole scene was I really liked it but there again there were just things about it that I'm like you know the whole it's magnet it's not magnetized they said it's magnetized but it's really not I didn't quite understand it and I didn't understand how gunpowder when you throw it in the air stays up in the air air and kind of floats around just floats around (laughs) like it's goes to the magnetized yeah gravity still works it should have like just fallen down on the ground back but then or like I don't understand how it stayed elevated. So the whole magnetizing thing, I don't know. Sometimes it, I'm like, they did a good job of like every once in a while, I'll be like, like the guy's glasses fly off his head mm-hmm. and hits the thing. But there are other times and you're like, they make it look like it's really super powerful when metal's around it. But then it seems like, and again, continuity stuff just drives me bananas. It seems like, that whole, I the, would imagine the whole warehouse, the whole is, warehouse full of, is full of metal. There shouldn't be like all these boxes sliding. <laughs> It'd be easy it. to find it because there'd just be a big pile of boxes, yeah, yeah. all hovered around. It's in the it. middle. Yeah, yeah, I, that's a good point. Yeah, but but that is a good scene. I mean, I I like that scene a lot mm-hmm. because you know in Raiders it's like. There's this warehouse, and it's got all sorts of crazy stuff. I would have liked to have seen some more boxes break open mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, see some other you know secrets or something. But yeah. it was cool that they were there, and and then the scene I thought was was pretty fun. Um, 
it, it is interesting to me that like Indiana Jones, like he's always so whenever he's captured, he's pretty quick to work with whoever it is that captured him to solve the, you know, yeah. Yeah. the riddle or whatever. And he gets all, maybe, maybe it's because he's like a, an archaeologist and a professor, and he's just excited that somebody yeah. is interested in what he's got to say. Yeah. <laughs> but he's just like, hey, let's all look at this map together. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, you know? like that. So, yeah, it does answer the question, where is the Ark, right? Yeah. That's, that was a big question at the end of Raiders. Like, where Area is this 51. Place? I like that. I actually like yeah, that. That's yeah. kind of cool. I like it's, it. Yeah, so it solves that big mystery. <laughs> I don't know how big, but... Uh, and then they, Indiana Jones goes on the the rocket sled. Well, they, yeah, and they get in a big fight. Mid they fight. fall through the glass. They land on a rocket sled. Mm -hmm. He kicks the guy. He busts through the glass. Ha happens to start the countdown. Yeah, I like how it burned up those burns days. up all those people. Yeah, that <laughs> lights all the Russians on fire. Pretty yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, and then he's able to escape into the desert. And uh, so we can talk, I was going to save that for later, but we can talk about the fake town, the nuclear town. Um, so I liked it overall. He's just, he's wandering, he comes upon this town. You're like, oh, he's, he's going to be saved. He can call someone. And then it's, he walks around like, what is this place? Yeah. And it's all just mannequins and fake stuff. And you're like, what? what's going on? And then you hear the sirens. He's like, oh, that's not good. He hides in the fridge. The bomb goes off. The fridge is pushed out outside of the blast radius. You actually see the fridge fly over yeah, the Russian car. car. <laughs> yeah, which again, it's that low. It's so low, like it goes straight over their car. But then it shows it like, like come fall down from high in the sky, like it went like this trajectory. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, and the car blows up. Yeah. I would like have liked to see more debris instead of just the fridge is the only thing, right? There, yeah. At least other fridges. A couple mannequins or yeah. something. Yeah. But uh, he pops out and he's like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> he's got birds flying around his head. Cuckoo birds. Yeah. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, and then he's, he's brought back to the agents and questions and stuff. But uh, I know we've, we've talked about this a lot off camera. What did you guys – overall, I liked it. I just felt – I'll get into that later. What did you guys think of the scene? The scene? Like, I was perfectly fine with it, but the anything. refrigerator thing is just dumb to me. I mean, okay. like, it's not. And they say, like, and they put on there, oh, it's lead lined. Well, lead doesn't, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the idea is lead protects you from radiation. But I'm pretty sure it's like a billion degrees when you're right next to an atomic or nuclear bomb and it explodes and everything melts. So I don't know that the fridge would have survived the heat. Mm, yeah. I think I no, I I think that there's a fridge scene in Oppenheimer too, this summer. We'll okay. watch. And see. <laughs> we'll have to see. And yeah, I'll stand up in the middle that. of the movie and go. See, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like he just comes out. He just rolls out of there. Like, and I'm. I don't. I don't like. He just rolls out of there. Like, <laughs> like whoa, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> like like he just like fell out of an airplane in a raft or yeah, something. Yeah, not. <laughs> A pretty, I don't think anyone would have survived an atomic blast from ground zero by hiding in a 1957 well, refrigerator. George Lucas did the research. I bet he did. And he said there's a 50-50 chance you can make it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I don't know what research it was <laughs> and what the conditions were. He went on Google. Yeah. <laughs> in 19-whatever year that so was. So you're fine with it, just the fridge thing was like, Yeah, okay, the fridge thing was dumb. That's too much. And the again, all the CGI prayer dogs you know and the, the like goofy looks like they're look i'm like am i what am i watching here what is this is this an indiana jones movie or a saturday morning cartoon what about you blake what do you think I, I liked it i mean it was i i i'm not quite as uh focused on on the plausibility as <laughs> as natives i guess but yeah. i'm like yeah perfect he's in a fridge that makes total sense and then it bounces down the it, 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 and and him going into that town and and yeah I remember the first time I watched I'm like oh what's going on here now and then you hear it you hear the siren and you're just automatically it's like you're realizing as he is like oh no you got to <laughs> get out of there and I have no idea how far you got to go yeah. but you got to 
anyway yeah. it, it was fun to watch it's, it was a, fine a few miles <laughs> yeah. at least a good, a, a good hundred miles probably yeah. safe distance yeah yeah more than than the fridge could <laughs> the trajectory <laughs> of the fridge would have taken them yeah so yeah. the term nuking the fridge arose after this and it's akin to jumping the shark so which i'm sorry you'll have to explain that to me jumping the shark yeah so back in the 70s i think happy days okay the bonds, yeah the, it was uh, a hot show i yeah okay you don't okay. have to yeah i, so, yeah. I remembered the yeah. water skiing yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> um yeah so i liked it i just again how does it fit into the story like couldn't even just like he could have escaped and gone somewhere else and the bomb could have never happened and could not have been a part of the movie, right? Like what what is the purpose of it? I, I, I don't have a problem with that, any of it. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, have him escape maybe in a way that's a little bit more sl- – I mean, look, look, it's a movie. I understand. You got to have fun. You got to have a little make-believe in it. But, mm-hmm. I mean, at the same time, it just can't be absolutely ludicrous, <laughs> yeah. you know, either. Yeah. To me, to me, it kind of felt like there was a big jump from – last crusade from a time perspective you know to this and so like the hot rod race and the and then the you know the area 51 roswell stuff and then and then Mm. well let's put them in it felt like they were just trying to plug a bunch of things in saying this is the time we're in here's what was happening at that time maybe okay but but you're right it doesn't tie into anything later it's not like there's a atomic bomb theme or or yeah. anything like that but yeah and the next scene he's just like in a room getting scrubbed down by guys like yeah. how do they find him well, i mean I, I you know yeah I, okay something i don't know yeah i mean it 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 doesn't bother me that they had the scene yeah it's perfectly even though the, but it sets the tone right it seems like they wanted anything that that was a 50s reference yeah they were trying to, they yeah. wanted to put it in there and these are george lucas and and steven spielberg the 50s was their yeah, it's heyday, right? Growing up, time. Yeah, yeah. So this is stuff that they want to reference. Yeah. So I, I, point. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. Yeah. And you got Harrison Ford saying, "I like Ike." Right? Yeah. Yeah. I like Ike. in the fifties. Yeah. So yeah, it's establishing this is the fifties. They beat us over the head with it, but yeah. Yeah. That's what they're doing. And it gave them a chance to like, you know, that scene of them all in their hazmat suits washing off Indiana yeah. Jones. I mean. Sometimes I wonder they're like you know an idea catches hold and then I think sometimes they put it into a movie for a couple of scenes that they think will be be fun. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's part of it. They just needed. How do we get Harrison? How do we get him shirt with his shirt off with some people watching <laughs> him? Yeah. yeah. And which, by the way, the guy looked awesome. I mean, yeah. I wish I looked half as good as yeah, me. Yeah. You know, and that how old was he in when he made this? That's a good question. Six, Let's figure that out. I mean, sixty. Holy cow. I mean, I know those Hollywood, they get, you know, they have all this free time to get in shape for a movie. But I'm like, geez, he's 10 years older so than I am. born in 42, and it came out in 2008. So, so what's that, 66? So, yeah, he's 66, yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah, 66 at that time. Well... Yeah, 65, 66. I saw something on, like, recently that Harrison Ford and Joe Biden are the same age. <laughs> that's crazy if that's yeah. true. So so you're telling me that Joe Biden could have been in this Indiana yeah, Jones movie? Been, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Man. That is. Senator Biden. It's right? so interesting how people age so differently. Yeah. I guess yeah. he just, yeah. All right, so characters, we've been talking about Indiana Jones' development over the movies. You know, yeah. how, how has he changed? The previous three, they were pretty close together. A uh, period of 25 months or so took place. So there was not there was some development, but overall, it's pretty much the same guy. Uh, how about for this one, 19 years later? Do we see him as the fortune and glory kind, or the it belongs in a museum indie? Or I'm making this up as I go along, Indiana Jones, or perhaps a combination. Like, how, how did you see him in this film, Blake? Yeah, I. So it's interesting. I haven't seen the new movie yet, but I I've heard that there's a bit of a theme of like, kind of regret and things like that. That mm-hmm. felt a little bit like we didn't we didn't get a chance to see 
him in a normal situation. He was yeah. kind of right into the in, but he he seemed tired. He mm-hmm. seemed kind of a little bit worn out, and maybe that he was settling down. And then when he kind of you know got put on leave and everything, he he you know he, he seemed a little tired, a little gruff, a little regretful of 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 kind of where you know where he was at the time. I don't know. Yeah. That's the that's how the impression I got. Okay. Yeah. You can see that. You just seem like the same old guy to me. <laughs> just right. a little older, a little, little wiser, a little, little more experienced. They more definitely give the impression that he was a war hero. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. so that tells me he's like a true patriot. He's mm-hmm. you know, he's obviously fights on the war. Mm-hmm. Did they even did they mention his rank? <laughs> I don't, know. I don't think they do, right? Yeah. yeah. But I don't he must yeah, I don't know. They're all, they cuz the guys like, "Do you know how many medals this guy's won?" But then Max is like acts like they're spies. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of really yeah. curious about all that. So he he polls. fought he was in World War 1. That's what Young Indiana Jones Chronicles mm-hmm. addresses okay. some of that. And then he was also in World War 2, but we don't see that cuz right. Crusade ended right before World War 2 and this is after. So we don't know. Yeah. So I think that's just stuff they kind of made up yeah hmm. so i think he's whatever his character is it's pretty much follow the same progression mm-hmm. you know he was young yeah. adventurous probably a little bit fortune and glory type of person mm-hmm. and now he's more i mean i know that there's a reference to that very thing and about greed and money at the end with mac and the mm-hmm. treasure room yeah. and all that yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah and he's just like you know he he's like that that he's not impressed by all of the that he's more impressed on the historical aspect of it yeah not the value of it or mac it was like oh man you know how much money this is gonna get us yeah, yeah i saw parts of all three that's why i listed them <laughs> okay <laughs> but it was subtle like like you mentioned uh-huh. like it belongs in a museum when he walked into that room with all the artifacts like oh look at all this stuff he was impressed by it right Fortune and glory, probably not so much, but um, he's making up, making it up as he goes along. That definitely was even referenced by Marion. Oh yeah, later on. Yeah, I don't think he knows what he's doing. Yeah, that's. I think that's just part of who he is. Yeah, which is is a great character thing for him. Um, but he does seem tired. He seems worn out. Um, he slowed down as of late. He's experienced loss of loved ones that we see. Uh, we see Sean Connor. Henry Jones, the senior, yeah. his picture, Sala's picture, who's dead. and uh, Not Sala. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brody. 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 We, we do see Sala in a picture along with, what's her yeah. name? Willie Scott, but they're not dead. Which was like, I don't know why that jumped out to me, but when he is sitting at his desk and he looks and the two pictures he, he has is his estranged dad and a friend. Yeah. I'm <laughs> like, well, he, he was with Marion. He was like... Yeah, like he should have yeah. taken more than two pictures in his life. And, and I didn't like that the pictures they used appeared to be just screenshots yeah. from the movies. <laughs> yeah, period. like you couldn't like you couldn't like make up a new an actual photo. Yeah. You had to take a production photo from like <laughs> the the previous movie promotions or movie posters and just stick them in a Walmart frame, yeah. and put them on his desk. I thought it was like that. Was yeah. Better. So he he seems to be. Committed, like he's a teacher now. It's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, he's, he's still core in the core of Indy's still there, but he seems like he's a teacher. Um, I think it's. I think it'll be interesting to see how Dial of Destiny is, how he is there, and how close he is to what we saw in this movie, Crystal Skull. Because mm-hmm. I think that's going to be a more accurate progression than you know, nineteen years prior with the other three. So it'll be interesting. Uh, Mac George McHale. I didn't really like him as a character. Um, he's an old war buddy. They had had past adventures. There's actually a book called Indiana Jones and the Army of the Dead, which is actually a pretty good story. I read that. Mm. Um, but it was written after the movie and Mac and India are together in World War II. Mm. So, mm. Uh, it's interesting because the the moment you, we meet Sala, he's, you like them. Yeah. You, I don't know what it is, but the moment you meet Mac, you're like, I don't like this character. I don't, like I, him. I don't know what it is. It's weird. Well, and, and it was kind of weird because, so he betrays him, 
two or three times. <laughs> but then every time he sees him, even after he just betrayed betrayed him, he like greets him like an old college buddy, like Jonesy. Yeah. yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and then Indiana tries to save him at the end. Yeah. Like, like yeah. go, just come on. Like, there's still like a bond. Maybe? You don't even have to hold on. Just stand up and walk <laughs> away. <That's true. laughs> that was my thing. Like, <laughs> you didn't get hurt. Yeah. You're not, it's not sucking you. You're like five feet away from yeah. where Indiana Jones is, which is safe. Stand up, walk up the stairs. Yeah. You got the jewels in your hands. What? It's yeah. all good. He's just like, it's too late for me. Ah. Yeah. 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 Uh, you go on. on or go on without me. <laughs> yeah. So I was just confused by his character the whole time. He's like, is he his friend? Is he not his friend? Like, yeah. Is he working with the Russians? Is he just in for himself? Yeah. So I, just the indecision. I I liked how they tried to include him as a double agent that kind of adds some mystery. So what, you're a triple agent? Oh, I just lied about being yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> I just lied about being a double agent. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. It just got old. It did. And it's like, eh. I don't care about this guy anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, when he died, I was like. Yeah, oh well. I think he could have been it. Yeah, I guess he's supposed to be a bad guy. Mm-hmm. He's dropping the red flashlights, yeah. <laughs> which, like, I didn't understand. Like, are they following? I was, like, expecting them to, like, following some sort of yeah, it was a beeper tracking thing, device. tracking device. But it, I didn't. At any point, did they show someone holding something that showed them? Okay. Yeah, the first time, there's a guy in the background. I had to look for it. Oh. So I had the same question. Well, how are they tracking it? So I looked, and there's a guy with this box thingy. Oh, okay. I like, well, I guess, yeah. So Arena Spalco, we talked a little bit about her. I see her as a combination of Elsa Schneider from Last Crusade and Belloc from the first one. Mm-hmm. They're working for this government, but they're really in it to get what they want. Yeah, they're using yeah. their resources to get what they want. And then they do. They, they do get it, but then they also perish as well. I love Kate Blanchett. I think she's a fantastic actress. And yeah. I just don't think she was the right pick for this. I didn't like the wig. I, I think that was kind of the off putting thing. I was thinking about it after you mentioned it you yeah. know, a couple weeks ago, whatever. And I thought if they just had her like long hair, like, you know, whatever, I, I think, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It might have worked a little better, but it was just kind of like this. I don't know. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually her idea to do the bob cut. <laughs> and I don't mind the cut. It's just like, I, I I, just think they should have picked someone, you know, like Elsa, yeah. and a, kind of an unknown. Uma Thurman of, was offered the position initially. She turned it down. Mm, what about interesting. her? Or would you want like an unknown? I think I would want an unknown who has the real accent, not mm. someone who's doing a fake yeah. accent. Uma Thurman would have been... Uma Thurman would have been interesting because there's a sword fight. Oh, yeah. you, you got the whole <laughs> Kill Bill and the okay, bride, and she's an action. When star. that when that sword fight happened with Uma Thurman, I would have been like, "All right, yeah, we go. I'm in. <laughs> this guy's dead. Yeah, Mud's dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I would have think I would have liked someone who wasn't like trying so hard to pour on this thick mm. accent. Yeah, I can see that. Um, they did hire all, like all the background guys, the soldiers, they were real Russians. Oh, that's or, cool. Yeah. At least they spoke Russian. Yeah. They looked Russian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you could, did you, could you tell the accent was fake or just it's cause just, you knew I just was, know her, you yeah. know, it's just like, that's Kate Blanchett. She's yeah. not Russian and that's not her hair. It's just <laughs> like, so she was too well known. Yeah, yeah. To me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I don't think El- Elsa. Uh, I don't know what her. I think she's English. Nationality is I think, but they made her from Austria. Mm-hmm. But I don't think she's from the United States, is she? No, England. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. So, I wish. Yeah, I wish. I just kind of wish they had picked someone a little less known because I was like right off of the bat. I'm like, you're. She's not, like, that yeah. doesn't match up to Galadriel. Yeah, <laughs> it just didn't. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, okay. we got to get going. Yeah. We'll be here all night. So I did like, I thought her sh- that she was probably the most formidable villain that we've seen so far in the fact that she's competent. She's, oh, what did I write down? Um, relentless, competent, and resourceful. Like with Donovan, uh, he wasn't really a villain in nah, the first place. kind of a stooge. Belloc mm-hmm. was just in it for himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Mola Ram guy was just a religious fanatic. Yeah. But I think she was just more well-developed. She had more of a backstory or more, 
She's a deeper character. Yeah. In my mind. I so. think that's pretty, I would agree with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Mutt Williams, a.k.a. Henry Jones the third. What did you guys think of him? His introduction was a greaser type on a motorcycle just riding in, a la Marlon Brando in the 50s. He looked like he was cosplaying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I didn't, I, again, I, I think I've said this. I like him as an actor. I think he's a, can be an incredible actor. I just, you know, this is, he was the hot thing during yeah. this time. Yeah, and Transformers, I think, Holes. And I think they ended up regretting it after it was all said and done. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he had the yeah. same problems on the set that he has had on other movies. You know, you know the drug problems and not getting along with the other actors. And mm-hmm. in the end, it was just not the right choice. And, yeah, I, that's a hard. That is a hard um, role to cast. I think though, because y- you've got to have somebody. I mean, I. Th- I think what they were trying to do is stage for like handing this over. Right. And he mm-hmm. was the hot guy at the time. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, maybe he could be the next Indiana Jones. And I think they were trying to do all of that, but also trying to find somebody who could be secondary to Harrison Ford. You know, you can't have his son be like some chiseled six foot three, <laughs> you know, like action star, because then it kind of, it's true. You know, sec like Takes marginalizes Indiana Jones. Yeah. So he's got to still be the man in every scene. Yeah. But there's got to be. So it's kind of a hard, I That's think it was a hard point. role to, yeah. to fill. And I didn't like him in the first one. And I really liked him back at the, the first time I saw it. And I liked him at the time. Yeah. So like when he was cast in it, I was like, oh, that's going to be awesome. You know? Yeah. Um, and I didn't like it when I his role as much when I watched it, but then when I rewatched it, I was like, "Oh, I was a little too hard on him." Like he did a it good works job. Okay. I mean, the you acting know? I think is is really good. I so I I kind of just think that I don't like how they dressed him up in this greaser kind of look. Which I mean, that's fine, but mm. but I you you make a very good point. If they had if they had put him in a, a, a kind of this. Harrison Ford look alike, it would have definitely taken away from that. So yeah. That's a good point. And my perspective was like yours, Blake, in that, okay, you're going to hand this off. He's going to be the new indie, blah, blah, blah. But then this time I watched it, I was like, well, there's no way he could be the next indie because he doesn't have the same skill set. He's not a professor. He doesn't have all this knowledge about dropped the, out of school. Mm, dropped out of school. They could retcon that. They could be like, oh, yeah, he, he's actually really bright and he's got he just quit school because he was (laughs) too too smart smart. or some dumb thing it's a waste of his time yeah Yeah. but but there were some things in the movie where they're kind of like like he'd come up with something or he'd Mm -hmm. solve something and you could see like indiana jones like like kind of like oh yeah you know like you're coming along or Mm -hmm. what there were some of these telegraph scenes like that too i think where i'm like okay it feels like they're setting it up but but yeah just would never yeah. work. He couldn't have been an uh, archaeologist adventurer type. Yeah. Uh, I read that Lucas was wanting to do a spinoff where he would have his own adventures with his own flavor. Huh. And uh, Harrison Ford would be, kind of be the the sidekick or the cameo. Like he'd be in it for a bit, then it's Mutt's adventures. But then it just kind of dropped after that. It's like, eh. Well, I mean, first of all, you can't call him Mutt. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mutt. That was a mistake. I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah, you can't get behind Mutt. The Adventures of Mutt Jones. Like, yeah. how do you? It's um, the Mutt of the. You know, it sounds like Runt of yeah. the lit, right? It yeah. just sounds like like the small. We can't call him Henry. Yeah, that's just weird. Hank. Hank. I don't well, know. it worked with Indiana because you thought his name was the Indiana the whole time, but Indiana's a cool name. And it's like, yeah. And then it's like, oh, it's the dog. Oh, it's, that's funny. Yeah. But with Mutt, you know it's the dog already. And it's, yeah. And it's yeah. Mutt. A yeah. Mutt is like not a, is a kind of a derogatory mm-hmm. term. Yeah. It's a bad choice. So his story was uh, Marion and Indy were together. They never got married. She, she got pregnant. He left a little bit later for whatever reason. He was born. She hooked up with Colin Williams, who was, one of Indy's friends, he died in the war at mm-hmm. a young age when Mutt was a young, like still an infant, basically. Mm-hmm. 
And then Oxley took over and was kind of a surrogate stepdad type figure mm -hmm. that raised him. So that's where that connection comes in with Oxley. Um, what did you think about Ox? Yeah. I don't know. I, he was another character like Mac. It's like, uh, why is there such a big name actor, John Hurt, playing this guy? Because he's really not that involved. And in, he yeah. has key points in the story, but he's not like involved in the story. You go, Blake. I mean, I, I'm a little torn with him because it felt like because of the, you know, the he was kind of in this trance or whatever. Mm -hmm. You didn't really get a a chance to connect too yeah. too much with him until toward the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, but then also, you know, you kind of have this eccentric guy fumbling around and, and, and the, you know, the secrets to the, you know, kind of to the adventure in his mind and, yeah. and all that. So, I mean, it, I, I liked it all right, but it, to your point, it felt like because of the role, you didn't get a chance to connect as much with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wish that he would have snapped out of the. I wish that they he would have been faking it, mm -hmm. and then when they escape and they end up in the sand pit, he would have been like, yeah, came out and acted normal. And I know that they and then they would have and then the rush instead of him going and getting the Russians for help, they figure out another way at the Russians. And when they show back up, he goes back to acting like <laughs> that would have been funny to me. Yeah. yeah. But he for the whole movie he acts like he's this you know in a in another spacey world and he i think he gets like three lines where he's like a coherent person yeah there at the end uh and i'm like what a waste of talent because yeah. he is such an awesome actor yeah uh i yeah. just can't believe they had him act like that mm -hmm. the, whole the whole time yeah i agree uh he was the key he knew where akator was so that's kind of why they kept him around uh marion's back uh, I loved seeing Marion and Indy back together again on the adventures. Uh, overall, I thought it was a good choice to have her there. There were times we saw the Marion of Raiders in the adventure. There were times where she was just kind of this goofy woman with a silly grin on her face. Yeah. It didn't really match up. And I was yeah. disappointed. I, w I have the same thought. I'm like, you, you got glimpses of the old Marion, but then you just kind of got this giddy yeah. goofy person like who is this yeah. this isn't the same yeah. mary this is off yeah off -putting. yeah like she goes you know she's kind of the one who drives off the cliff and down through all of the the waterfalls and it's like oh wow everybody else is scared to death and she just goes for it that's the old marion yeah and then at the end of it she's sitting on the on the beach with this yeah. bizarre <laughs> look on her face yeah. and the steering totally wheel weird and and I, yeah, that was off putting. Yeah, yeah it's just, like this is not the tough. You know, she was in the Raiders. Punching she was, Indiana Jones. Yeah, she was this tough, totally with a girl, and this one she seems like she's been taking too many yeah. <laughs> Valium over the last twenty years, and now she's kind of half cuckoo. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, I liked how they got married at the end. That was a good yeah conclusion yeah, yeah that, that was cool. Relationship. Uh, so themes, I think we talked about how they're hitting us over the head with the fifties, but there's aliens. And that was a big thing in the fifties. It sounds like with yeah. Roswell area 51. Uh, I think the aliens fits into the timeline, but does it fit into Indiana Jones? I mean, fine. It's like, <laughs> you know, uh, it I, is kind of a paranormal thing. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I, I don't know this, but I, it's, I mean, from the, um, from the Indiana Jones Chronicles, from what I've read, there's some kind of goofy things yeah. like that in that series. Yeah. I think I read, well, I know that I read that there's an episode where he fights a vampire, mm -hmm. I think. So it's kind of like, you know what? Fine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Any thoughts on that? Like, well, aliens? I mean, it, it, it were, it fit okay for me because there were those paranormal elements to, to all the other, other movies. And then, you know, you think about an archeologist and you think about things like ancient Egypt and pyramids and how they were built and the, yeah kind of the extraterrestrial theme to, to all those kinds of things. How could these societies exist? And 
there was this alien element to it, you know, kind of that conspiracy uh, thought. And so I was like, oh, okay, they're bringing that piece into, you know, the archaeology angle. I was all right with it. Yeah. I mean, at this, at the end of the day, it's like, look, I mean, I can't, I am, it was I disappointed that it was aliens? Yes. But who am I to say? You can't make you can't have aliens in it. It's yeah. kinda like, you know what? Your it's your story. Yeah. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. I wish it wasn't. To me, I look at all the other things as a little more <clears throat> even though they're a little more grounded or grounded. Something. Cause yeah. they're like they're like it's like something that's an accepted part of human culture, religion, yeah. regardless of your ethnic or uh, background every or you know mm. society has some sort of religious belief there's all these deities so to me it's 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 something that's a little more in my sphere of comfort zone mm-hmm. where this is just kind of way out there but you know yeah i like how you said it's more grounded like it's it's earth right it's yeah. what we've grown up learning and have experienced to some degree yeah um but this is just so foreign that it kind of clashes a bit with the previous story. There's some yeah. elements there, but yeah, it just seems a little, I like alien movies like Independence Day. And yeah. All that stuff. Right. I love alien movies. Yeah. But it just, I don't know. It didn't fit. I liked it, but it didn't fit yeah, with the rest this of is like what a we diff- know. It's this Indiana Jones. He's yeah. an archeologist. <clears throat> this is gritty. This isn't science fiction. Yeah. Sp- this is spacey science fiction. This is, you know, yeah. And yeah, this is adventure. Yeah. So this crystal skulls, they were a big thing in the early 1900s. They were found, allegedly, and they were said to be of Mayan Aztec origin and had psychic powers, people that found yeah. them when they were selling them to the museums and stuff. But later on, as they would study them and do tests on them, they came to be found that they were all they were all fake. Yeah. But that was kind of later on in the 19, like 1970s, 80s. Mm. Yeah. So... That's where that whole idea from is pretty intriguing, pretty interesting. Wait, so there were actually crystal skulls mm-hmm. that just people create that people created, were created kind of a hoax and saying thing. that they were. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Because back when they were discovering all these Mayan stuff and artifacts and cities, they were like, "Oh, look at this! I found this crystal skull," and they actually made it in Germany and shipped it over and oh, <laughs> planted got it, it a little something. dirty. Wow, yeah. I yeah. had no idea. That's, I didn't. That's know interesting. That. Yeah, and one of them is mentioned in the movie. Uh, the Mitchell Hedges skull. Yes, that was a that was the one that took the longest to disprove because the person who found it wouldn't let people study it. Wow, <laughs> and it was pretty. It was more convincing than the others just by looking at it mm-hmm. without doing tests. Were they did they have an elongated skull like that, no. or was it just a normal crystal? Just normal skull? human type skull. Yeah, huh. but yeah. So the spin was the, the alien. The crystal skulls were of alien nature. That's where that hmm. they came interdimensional from. beings. Interdimensional beings. Yes, not aliens. We're not <laughs> talking about aliens. Come on. So yeah. Uh, so previous stories had a religious type MacGuffin with God or religion, that sort of thing, and this is just like more sci-fi based, which yeah. does fit into the fifties and sixties era. It does. It wouldn't have flown in the thirties and forties. That's 40s. true. Sci-fi was huge That's in the fifties. Yeah, it really started. Spaceman and. Going to the moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It fits in the timeline for sure. Yeah. The Russians are the bad guys. It's the Cold War. One of the original scripts had like ex Nazis who were living. No more Nazis. Living in South America because they, they did that. They all fled to South America after the war. So they were like, oh, we've done Nazis to death. Let's do yeah. the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> so the Cold War, Stalin was in charge. He was kind of wanting to do some psychic weapon type stuff so that's where this crystal skull topic yeah. ties into that um so there was some we've talked about some but there were some elements from previous movies that i liked how they brought a lot of the previous stuff together into this movie and it kind of acknowledged some of that stuff like the ark and the covenant obviously um blake brought up using the whip to swing from the uh, lamps like yeah. the Temple of mm, Doom cool. but he didn't make it this time <laughs> yeah like, oh. so I that thought was that scary. was yeah I I that, that was, was closer so yeah. yeah I like yeah. that it was funny and I had heard that they wanted to do some sort of CGI whip and Indiana yeah. and Harrison was like nope <laughs> that's dumb <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> yeah which I appreciate yeah yeah because I think there's some CGI whip in I, I feel like once you learn how to use a whip 
Yeah. You want to use a whip anytime you can use a whip. You yeah, know? yeah, I would. In the trailer for the Dial of Destiny, that's, you could sell. You could. There's that one scene where he's at the table and they all yeah. pull it. That's a C. You could tell it's a CGI whip because mm. of the way the camera. You can see it whoosh, and it pauses and he whips uh, it back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, we got Marion Ravenwood back. Uh, picture of Willie Scott and Sala. I didn't see those pictures. It's brief. It's like in the background. Mm. Is it, are they production photos as yeah. well from yeah. the previous movie? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brody and Henry Sr. And what the, was the significance of the car chase through the... And, and the, specifically, because we really probably need to get... <laughs> we're going to be in this two hours. What's the significance of the Russian car chase thing through the school? And they, they run into Marcus Brody's statue and his head pops yeah. off. I'm like... That seems kind of mean. Why did they make his head come off? Well, did you see the gag after? N- well, no. It falls so in his lap. It falls in his lap, and Mutt's laughing. And then he and, just looks at him and shakes his head. Yeah, the old <laughs> the old uh, Harrison Ford, Sean Connery yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It mirrors that. You'll have to explain it to me. So this is this a, some sort of sexual innuendo kind of a thing or something? I don't, I don't understand what no. the reference is. Well, the so in Last Crusade, her, Indy causes those Nazis to crash, right? And he's all excited about it and he's laughing and looks at his dad and his dad just shakes his head like, oh, I can't believe he did that. Okay. So then here we got Mutt laughing on the motorcycle. Oh, look at that. That's funny. They broke the statue or whatever. And then oh. you got Indy looking at him like. So that's. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't see the reference of what that has to do with his head falling off. With the statue. I don't think there was anything particular, like except that. bringing in, mm-hmm. you know, that character yeah. in a different way, I guess. But yeah, I was like, Paul, poor Marcus, they <laughs> cut his <laughs> head off. His his head off. <laughs> dead head. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then we got Indy talking about writing with Pancho Villa, which yep. he did in the Indiana Jones Chronicles. So. Yeah. Bringing it all together, uh, we do have, like we talked about, the father-son relationship. How do you feel like their relationship played off? Obviously, it's different than uh, the previous one because they spent less time together and they didn't really know each other. <laughs> like, they were father son until halfway yeah. through the movie, but it's still there. What did you guys think? How did that well, fit with you? I mean, I was fine with it because you didn't really know until, you know, that scene. But... But the the interaction of at the 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 diner and then the car chase scene through the school, I thought that was great. Yeah. And mm. seeing Harrison Ford crawl through the window and beat yeah. up the guys and crawl out the window <laughs> yeah. back on the yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome, man. That was cool. I love that. I was like, man, this is so cool. That, yeah. And it looks like it's him. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure it, I don't think it was. There but, was some stunt double work. Yeah, yeah. but man, that was that. Like, how did they pull that off? Because that. That doesn't look like that looks legit. Like a guy really did. Yeah, that. and he slides back on, and he's holding on to the motorcycle, yeah. and like sliding on his. I think that know. was the stunt that was part. Cool. That, I'm but sure that was a stunt into double. The car, yeah. you see his face. So yeah, yeah, that's him. I mean that that whole part that was awesome. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. even the really super long slide. <laughs> they slide, the and, and the part about that is like the funny part is they slide and they push that student back, and he's like starts asking his professor questions yeah. and india you know indy like answers them as he's driving <laughs> away and got to get out of the library a, that's a good little gag yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> get out of that was library. chet hanks oh was it oh tom's son yeah. tom hanks son oh interesting yeah is chet the crazy one now <laughs> is he the <laughs> is he the crazy one or i don't keep track of the hanks because one of them's bonkers. Yeah, oh, really? I think. And then there's Colin Hanks, who's. Yeah. I, I think, think Chet okay, is still. the rapper. The yeah. One that kind of. I think he's like the one that kind of. Social gives, guy who's like all wound up. Can weird. be a little controversial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I okay. think that is that Chet. Interesting. So we've talked about the tone of the movie. Uh, it is adventurous. It is humorous. It is smart with the dialogue. And some foreshadowing, goofy at times. Yeah, not quite as dark as the other ones are, right? Even like even definitely not Last dark. Crusade, no, yeah. yeah, it's it's like yeah, this weighted evilness. You never get that uh-huh. in this one, right? That's true. Yeah, this is because there's not. It's just a chase. The 
I mean, there's the the people that are there. Are, well, yeah, you just that that overtone doesn't is really absent. Yeah, there's a lot of chasing, like you said. Just the warehouse chase, the university scene chase, the jungle chase, the chase, chase, yeah. the chase to the city. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. A continuous running. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get into least favorite parts. Oh boy. <laughs> Well, five only. Do you have one, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it to five. <laughs> so mine, we've kind of talked about most of them. Mac, he's just all over the place. I didn't really care for him. Yeah. His character. Oxley, I wanted to see more. Uh, but he was kind of insignificant other than knowing where to go at the end. even And he couldn't really talk. And I think it plays into my next one where there's just too many characters involved in the story. Like You got all these people that need screen time. I need backstories. And yeah. It's just, it just seemed crowded all the time. Yeah, I can see that. And so then yeah. with that, you get people being pushed to the back, like Oxley and, and Mac and even Marion at times. So I think there was just too much of that. Um, didn't like there was a, the traditional prologue. And then the natives, when they get to the kingdom, yeah. it was like, that was cool. But again, again, it's like, why have that opening hot rod scene? Why have the nuclear bomb going off scene? Why have the natives in Akator scene when they didn't really accomplish much? Yeah. Kind of slow, bog. Just a speed bump. Yeah. Yeah, They just chase them and then they only get murdered, which was kind of. Yeah. That was kind of dark. That is kind of dark and a little like, yeah. They all get machine gunned down like like a mass murder. That was actually kind of, yeah. Yeah. I mean. My biggest problem with that was just the whole hiding in the wall thing. It's just like, what do you do? You wake up and then go, hi, honey, I'm going to work. See you later. And you go, I'm going to go sit in a wall in case someone happens (laughs) to walk by, which hasn't happened in 300 years. That was a cool visual. Yeah. But what was the point? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, whenever they do, whenever, there there are lots of movies where they do that, where they'll put someone in some sort of secret hiding spot. And you're kind of like, wait, like, <laughs> have they been hiding there this entire time? Do they do that every day? How did they know they were going to come on that day? Yeah. Unless they they must have, like, seen them coming and they're like, oh, everyone go get in go their hide. hiding spots. <laughs> <laughs> but their wall, like, the hiding spots were not, like, yeah. superficial. They were, like, walled in with, like, like artwork and masks and painted that just all I'm like it would take days for someone to for them to get in that wall and then someone did it's just like oh my gosh there yeah. might have been a back door yeah there needs to have been a back door <laughs> okay uh who wants to go in with their least favorite I'll I'll go cuz I'm know, I'm Nate, like, Nate's probably got a no. uh, fully loaded yeah. no um, got I've, a notepad yeah a notebook for I'm not <laughs> I'm just yeah but yeah uh, <laughs> so so I liked I like the kind of, you know, they tried to get this like family bickering mm-hmm. dynamic and then with the three of them and, and I, I liked it a little bit, but then it like just got to be a little too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it kind of, the, the scene that, that, that I, that I didn't like <laughs> is in the, with the dry sand. Yeah. When he's like mansplaining everything as they're sinking. And then oh, yeah. for some reason, the only thing Mutt could find was like a 50 foot snake. (laughs) And, and I get like, there's, there's all this fan service or what, and it's like, well, obviously we'll have him have to grab onto the thing he hates most, a snake and blah, blah, blah. And I, yeah, that, that got to be a little too much, just that bickering and, and the back and forth there. Um, the, uh, and then, you know, the scene, we talked about it a little bit with Mac there at the end. Like his his yeah. character was just so imbalanced. And he's like, Jonesy, I'm an eight, you know, and, and then at the end he he bails, like, oh, he's going to save his own skin. And who wouldn't stop for just a second and grab treasures as you're going by, yeah. you know? Yeah. And but then he gets them all and and as far as I could tell, he just like tripped and he's like, That's it for me, <laughs> yeah. Jonesy. Save yourself. It's been nice knowing you. You've been a good friend. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, so so that part was was yeah, a little uh, yeah. a little off, and uh, I don't know. Those were probably the two okay. 
that, that we haven't talked about already. All right. Fair yes. enough. I agree with all, all of yours. Those. I've got to say, yours. I don't think that you've come with a notebook. I did. <laughs> on for, Raiders. On Raiders, you did? I actually had time. But you have like four pages over Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. I, well, no. Yeah. I'm not going to. I'm just going to stick to, I, I agree. At least give us two or three. Yeah, I'm going to try to find ones that we haven't already yeah. talked about. Because yeah. a lot of this stuff is stuff we've already talked okay. about. Fair enough. Yeah. And again, no one wants to hear me go on and on and on. Well, next we're going to praise it. So okay, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, awesome movies. I mean, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, I didn't. So everything you said, I didn't like the jungle scene. The mm. you know mutt swinging through the trees like a monkey, looking at monkeys. The you know I thought, and all that was all CGI. Mm. It, it it didn't look good. Uh, I thought it was silly. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it just didn't even look realistic. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not opposed to someone swinging once or twice on a rope, but like, not for miles and miles. And and uh, I really I thought that was kind of um, that's just silly. Uh, there was this, you know, in the warehouse scene, it shows Mac in the car with the other Russian, and they're heading yeah. on. They smash head on full speed. And the next time we see Mac, he's just kind of like, no, no bodily injury, no broken nose, no nothing. I mean, in real life, he's not like he's wearing a seatbelt. His he would have flown through that windshield. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just again all these continuity issues just kind of really bugged me. Uh, we talked about Kate Blanchett mm -hmm. already. Talked about Mutt. Um, uh, <laughs> I liked the graveyard scene. Oh, but yeah. but which we didn't talk about. I actually thought that was really cool. I didn't mind the scorpion thing, but when he when Indy jumps up and blows the blow dart back in the guy's throat, <laughs> he but, must have misloaded or I'm something. I'm like, right? did he put it in backwards? They usually don't poison darts on both ends. It probably hurt. <laughs> yeah, like they usually put like a feather or a stop on one end so it actually goes through. That that doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But uh, okay, whatever. But all these little okay, whatever's they kind of added up for me to a point where I'm like, this is just not good. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really appreciate the the ants. Really, <laughs> he says the the Indian or the Mayan word for them. What is that? He's like, really big ants. Yeah, and the big damn ants. Yeah, big damn ants. Uh, just too much CGI in this one. It, this overall, this movie just kind of like it lost its grittiness compared to the first three it just again kind of like i made a reference it it it's it didn't have the same kind of greediness and it didn't have the same kind of of uh it just felt a little cartoony a little too kind of like your critique of the last crusade yeah i was gonna say yeah I, it's kind of how i felt about this one um yeah and we everything else we've kind of already talked about especially and that whole jungle scene and the sword fight on the cars and Mutt constantly getting hit in the crotch. <laughs> well, you got to love a crotch hitting. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> one. And then like, oh! But he just takes it. He just stands there and takes it over and over and over again. I'm like. <laughs> he was leaning into it yeah, by the I'm end. Like, what is going on here? This, this is like. He's just kind of like. And then he just puts his hand there and keeps sword fighting. And the, and cool. that crystal skull, it's supposed to be magnetic, right? But during that jungle scene, they're throwing it around. Yeah. And it's not – if it sticks to metal, wouldn't they have a hard time – like wouldn't it be stuck to a car? Wouldn't yeah, they they could just stick it to the car and it's good. Yeah, <laughs> but they have no problem lifting it up out of the car and flinging it with the swords back and forth. It's just – anyways. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, uh, good stuff. I, I can agree with some of those. Favorite parts. I liked Indiana and Mutt and Marion on an adventure. Like you said, I did like some of the banter, but not necessarily all of it. Uh, the graveyard scene. I liked fighting the grave diggers, uh, searching for the grave of Francisco de Oriana, finding like the little the, the thing that tilted to kind of yeah. discover. That was oh, yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Finding the remains, the mummified remains, finding the crystal skull, and Indy's amazement at what it was. 
He was like, yeah. what is this thing? Yeah. Like he was just completely baffled. Yeah. And I really like that. I, was, I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah. just that overall gray guard scene was, I yeah. liked. Which is, uh, yeah, which is what we, which is what in the previous movies are things that we liked. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, the warehouse chase, we've talked about that. Swinging from the lamps, um, seeing the arc, the rocket sled. Spalco, I thought she was a good villain with depth and purpose. Yeah. The 1950s cafe fight, I really like. The motorcycle chase. Like, it started in the cafe, they started punching each other. The I greasers like that. against the college movie. Yeah, that was yeah, cool. I, I like it. Yeah. And I like, he's like, hey, hit this guy. Yeah. He's like, what? <laughs> hit him. And he college just, boy. Yeah. Yeah, hit hit what is hit Joe, Joe College. College yeah. Hit Joe College. I like that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, just the whole chase there. I thought that was pretty. Cool. Yeah, and didn't a girl like punch someone? Yeah, well, the yeah. girl punched Mutt. Then yeah, doesn't a girl <laughs> punch Mutt? Yeah, yeah, that was great. And she was someone famous. Yeah, someone's famous kid too. I can't remember. Yeah, and then bonus like is I just love the soundtrack. I think it's the best of the series. Oh yeah. That was, I like didn't pay attention. Well, they got a patch, you know, kind of into the 50s stuff a little bit. And, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was good. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you guys have any likes? So, Favorite parts? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the warehouse scene a lot. I That, that was great. I like kind of the – and I liked the jungle chase. I kind of liked it. I liked it. And yeah. uh, it was, uh, you know, like when, when whatever that big thing comes off and I, I – yeah, it's not very plausible. That probably didn't exist. But when it kind of just skips down all those cars, and and then you look at the car and that spare tires just cut in half, Shredded. and yeah, and that was good. That was yeah. good. Um, the uh, I liked, you know, in the graveyard scene. We talked about this a little bit. That just that swing, and and he almost makes it and falls back into the windshield of, you know, the the Russian's car, and he's like, I thought that'd be closer, and <laughs> yeah. or kind of that whole when all these movies were coming out like you know rocky balboa and all, all these like revisits to 80s heroes that was kind of the theme is like oh they're old and yeah their joints and blah 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 <laughs> and so i don't know that was kind of just a fun scene um i liked i liked the ants only because i like it when you get to see somebody get consumed completely by an animal <laughs> just <laughs> they just carried that guy into this yeah. huge ant hill like almost like a wood chipper and just yeah. and uh yeah. um have you been to south america and seen the, the ant hill i have uh, not no. i have not is that a thing yeah. so yeah, they, they can get they can me. get like this tall they're taller right? than me it's yeah. a lot more yeah. wow yeah. they're massive yeah yeah, and I th- yeah. Pretty big ants. Yeah. I was scared of them. They weren't that big as we saw in this, but everything's big in the Amazon. Yeah. yeah. So that was cool. I liked uh, the the whole land. The climax was, you know, I mean, it was, it, it, they had some cool visuals, like all the, you know, crystal skeletons coming together and mm-hmm. stuff. But overall, that wasn't, didn't really do it for me. But I did like seeing Kate Blanchett's, you know, face melt again and i'm just yeah, a sucker it's not for a jones move we don't see someone's face, face melt, yeah, we, melt. Haven't, we haven't talked about the ending yeah, yeah. The big climax yeah. so you kind of liked it or you liked it i the climax yeah the end so so i like watching her melt and i liked kind of everybody getting sucked around and stuff okay. and but then when it actually the flying saucer came up that was kind of like i don't know why it just looked a little little weird and then indiana jones was right at the end like right on this ledge watching it yeah i'm like he's gonna get hit by something and then he almost get anyway yeah but but when the saucer came up and it was just that i guess that's how you have to do it but for like it it's the a 50s movie it's you know area 51 whatever and so it's that traditional flying saucer that comes up yeah but it it looked a little spinning even yeah but so i I mean i Little hit and miss. I liked it, but a couple of things were a little off putting. But I did like the the face melting. It was <laughs> yeah. all right. I liked the how knowledge was the the treasure. How mm-hmm. they made that reference. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, I thought that was a cool twist. Yeah, yeah. Mac didn't get it. Indy got it. Kate Blanchett, Spalco got well, it. Well, Mac <laughs> dropped out of school. Yeah, he, you know. Well, yeah. Then the end of the end of Last Crusade. He's like, it was kind of the same thing. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like, we didn't get the cup. And he's like, what did you get, Dad? And he's like, illumination. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Harrison yeah. Ford got illuminated as well. Yeah, that's right. Indiana Jones, knowledge. 
What did you think of the final sequence there? Uh, I mean, it was good. I uh, the whatever we call them, interdimensional beings. I wish there would have been, I don't know, maybe some sort of dialogue of some, maybe something yeah. where they could have communicated. Maybe I, I I can understand why they wouldn't have done that. They had the thirteen kind of become one. Um, I wish that they would have tied maybe the one that they went and got out of the area 51 mm, why yeah. what what's like is he a cousin i think they do mention maybe a distant cousin but, but he they flew, don't define it but he flew here but they made it sound like he crashed in a spaceship but they're not aliens they're yeah beings that live in the spaces between spaces, spaces. so yeah like so what's nice. what's going on there I, I yeah i just wish they had but you know uh, I mean, I really liked. I liked the warehouse scene, in spite of the some of the you know things that didn't make sense. It was a great scene, a great chase scene. I I did really like the the car motorcycle chase scene. Mm-hmm. I did like the uh, graveyard scene. That was like pretty spooky. The yeah. grave digger yeah. scene, um, the jungle scene. Yeah, I thought it was silly. <laughs> the I mean, um, I liked th- even though. Again, this was kind of silly to me. The dropping over the waterfalls and the like, you know, and and uh, you know, they're trying to figure out the the riddle or the rhyme. It drops three times, and there's no way that duck boat would have survived. Or well, they and after survived. each one, it's like it goes down. It's like a fifty foot drop, and then it pans to them, and like three of them are still in the boat, and he's still got his hat. And yeah, Mutt's just climbing back in. Like, yeah. Whoo. Wow! Yeah. Let's do it again. Like they just went on a water slide at a yeah. water park or something. Yeah, well, that was filmed. Well, the the waterfall is Iguazu Falls mm-hmm. in Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, mm-hmm. and there is they filmed it at the top. They came over the top, and there is that little drop into the second pool, and then there's another drop there. Mm-hmm. But for the third one, because there's like, um. There's the side section, which they, they dropped off first. And then the middle section is called the Devil's Throat. Mm. And that's like the massive drop. Okay. So they kind of, they filmed it going off the side into the little pool, then down again for the second drop. But then they went back to the Devil's Throat on top again, just a different angle oh. for the big drop. So gotcha. There, there's only mm. two drops there, but they made three out of it. Oh, gotcha. So. But it's not. Well, I mean, went out. Obviously, nothing really went over the edge. Was that just CGI showing yeah. the boat people yeah. falling over the yeah, edge? Yeah, because they they were going to do it a different way. I read that they went and took they filmed the falls, okay, and then they did the boat thing. And then huh. th- when they're in the water, that's like on studio set. Yeah, yeah. And even that ending scene was just on a set. Yeah, it was all blue screen yeah. and all that. Yeah, I wished when they get to the bottom and the the crying skull. You know, it's in its eyes. The reference was, or part of the riddle was something about tears. tears but, yeah. but when they actually showed the skull, they only showed water coming out of one eye and water coming out of the nose. Yeah. So to me, it looked like a runny nose. It's just <laughs> a guy with a yeah. busted eye and a runny nose. It would have been cool if it actually showed water coming Both out eyes. of the eyes, yeah. not one eye and his nose. It's just like, it's the skull with the runny nose. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. There's uh, no there's no school there. Uh, yeah. The I, yeah. I figured that, <laughs> that was studio. not real. Uh yeah, I mean I mean I liked I liked the warehouse, I liked the library chase scene, I liked the graveyard scene. Okay. Um you know, I liked and then just some of the references, you know. And of course it's seeing Indiana Jones in action is always good. I liked I liked when they're you know, they're the obelisk and trying to figure out and go down yeah. the tunnel. That was pretty scary and pretty good. And the yeah. spikes at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was good. A lot of good story elements. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. Rankings. So last time I ranked mine, I don't know if you guys remember yours, but I had Temple of Doom first, uh, Crystal Skull second before we watched it. Crew Last Crusade and Raiders was my last episode rankings. Do you guys remember yours at all? Uh Yeah. Uh, mine was Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, Raiders, Crystal Skull. Okay. Say yours again. Uh, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, Raiders, and then Crystal Skull. And I think I said Last Crusade 
Raiders, Temple, and Crystal Skull, I think is what I said. All right. Okay, so after watching this and talking about it, do you want me to go first or do you guys want to go first? Go for it. Oh, wait. No, you go last. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So mine didn't. Mine didn't change. Okay. But I, things that I remember we were talking about it, you know, last time, whatever. Mm -hmm. Things that I remembered you rubbed me wrong with this movie. Like when I watched it again, I was like, Oh, it's too hard on it. This is pretty good. And for like three quarters of it, I was like, Oh, this is, I, I would, I, you know, it, it went up, it was still at the bottom, but it was, it, it moved up as far as, you know, how much I liked it. Um, so anyway, I stayed the same, but I do like it a lot more than I remembered. Okay. Um, liking it. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, nothing's changed for me as far as where Crystal Skull is. It's still of the four. I mean, it's my least favorite. But I still really struggle with the first three. I mean, I really, you, any any given day, I could put any one of those at my, my number one. Yeah. I mean, I just, I really like, I think I said Last, Cru- I, I said Last Crusade, Raiders and Temple. But gosh, man, I love Temple. I to me they're just almost like three number ones, mm-hmm. and then Crystal Skull is like a distant fourth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, um, All right let's hear it. So mine has changed. Still Temple of Doom, still number one, which was surprising. I would not have picked that at the beginning of this before we started reviewing these, but it's still there. Um, Last Crusade is second, and then Crystal Skull, and then Raiders. Surprisingly. Which I I still, it's the it's the nostalgia factor is why I can't believe that Raiders is fourth because it should be number one. If I were ranking strictly off nostalgia, it's Raiders. Yeah, number but one. don't but, and that's fine. But don't not pick Raiders. Don't penalize Raiders yeah. just for that reason either. Right. I mean, if you're going to be fair, you got to just judge it based off of the true quality so it sounds like you're putting raiders last because you refuse to acknowledge that it's better than it really is no i i hope not i i it is good right like we you talked about there's three number ones for me it's it's one a one b yeah that type of thing Mm -hmm. but i mean again a lot of it's the writing Mm -hmm. and i just don't think this crystal skull writing was as as at the same par Mm -hmm. at the uh, as the other three well, I think with, with Crystal Skull, I think maybe that's why we see Miriam kind of like, at, at some point she's the old, you know, all right, there she is. And then, but but they were trying to create this dynamic. Even Indy, Indy kind of at times like, oh, he feels like kind of a grumpy dad now instead of yeah. Indy, you know. And But then that worked for me because he's now his father mm-hmm. in the situation that he was you know so yeah. uh, and that had to have been intentional right? yeah and even yeah. george lucas and steven spielberg and who was the other writer for which one crystal skull because david K- k-o-e-p-p K- cope and did Kev? he have any involvement in the other three I think so. as a writer but i can't help but feel even for me personally i know i'm not the same person right so anything i would have done 20 years ago I would going to even George Lucas did that with Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, he changed Star Wars because he's like, you know what? I don't, I, I'm a, I don't like that. I, I like that then, but then I thought about it and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't want to make Han Solo look like he's this murderous villain who just blasts someone without cause. Yeah. He kind of like was like, I don't, I, I don't want that message to be put out there. So he changed it, which yeah. bothered obviously a billion people. <laughs> I still think I disagree with that. But yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, how long is Raiders? Two hours. And how long is Crystal Skull? Like two uh, what's hours. What's the rundown? Well. It's pretty close to two, I yeah. think. Sean Connery said it was quite good, but quite long. Which one? <laughs> uh, Crystal Skull. <laughs> 122 minutes, so two hours. Raiders was 122. No. Crystal Skull was 122. And what's Raiders? Because it seems like Raiders was shorter. Because when you think of Raiders, you're like, okay, you've got the opening scene. You got the you got the he gets the medallion. He goes to 
He goes to the Well of Souls. He gets the Ark. He gets on the submarine. They go to the canyon. It's over. I mean, there's really not like... It's 115 minutes, which is only seven minute difference. Yeah. I mean, there's really not... I mean, when you look at Crystal Skull, there is a lot more locations. Yeah. They're going a lot of different mm -hmm. places. There's a lot of different scenes. When you think about Raiders, it's just like, there's not much to it. Yeah. So... Is that you think? Yeah, I think that's it. And then there's just more. It's faster paced, like this yeah. chase, this chase, this chase. Yeah, I do like that. Well, and I think visually, like if you were, if you showed my son or whatever, or just somebody, a millennial, whatever, mm -hmm. the two movies, and they'd never seen either of them. Obviously, Crystal Skulls got just you know like the effects and the you know like the visuals the colors all that are are superior you yeah, know yeah um but it does seem to though on that point i mean you, you, the story and everything does seem to cater to a younger audience crystal school does to yeah. me i look at crystal school and i think it's written to you know a, a younger audience where raiders is written more to a an adolescent teenage boy young man kind of where crystal skull seems to be more for like a like a younger kid well, and, and i mean when they started it's like you know we've talked about that that they were going for kind of a james bond kind of type of movie but you know in this different setting and and yeah crystal skull was like yeah it's kind of like it's a you know yeah. fun you know, well, the family biggest, adventure. Whatever. The biggest yeah. criticism was Temple was that it was too dark. So mm -hmm. did they just kind of like, well, let's go the opposite direction and just keep it more family friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't really a James Bond element to this movie. Christmas no. call. Yeah. But you bring up a really valid point, Blake, about like, hey, if that's, and I guess that probably is the problem with these father son type movies, even with like The Mummy, you know, the third Mummy movie. They bring in the sun, mm -hmm. and you're kind of like, you know, you, you're like, you don't want them to take away from the original hero and his bravado and everything. So you kind of like, how do you, how do you introduce a new character who's supposed to take over, but not make him look so good that he outshines yeah. the guy you like and yeah. you really came to see? That yeah. that is a really hard thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Good points. All right. So that is our review of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Seems like our opinions have pretty much stayed the same overall. And we like some of it. We don't like other parts. What do you guys think about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Most of the comments I see are that it's number four or lower on people's <laughs> list. So, but I also have seen stuff where people will like it, or at least they may, may be low on their list, but they don't hate it. Yeah. So what's your guys' opinion? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We will be doing a Dial of Destiny review here shortly. It comes out this weekend, so we'll be watching it. And then in the next week or so, we'll be back on the mic to talk about it and how it compares to the rest of it. Oh, boy. So... We want to thank you guys for sticking with us, for listening, watching. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely think of worse movies than The Crystal Skull. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah it was. I mean, it's an enjoyable movie. Yeah. Like we're kind of talking about, you know, the worst of the best. Sometimes, yeah, exactly. You know? I don't so, not like the movie. It's yeah. you know, it's just like of the four. It's my number four. Yeah. Is all I'm yeah. saying. Yep. Okay. So thanks, guys, for listening, and we'll catch you next time. See you. See you later.